Hello ladies and germs, this is a quick video response to a student who asked some questions about elasticities and uh, how to calculate elasticity coefficients. So very quickly, when we talk about elasticity we're talking about the responsiveness of an effect to a cause and we measure that by a ratio. We put the effect measured as a percentage change over the cause measured as a percentage change and uh, we can represent that then by a single number eta in this case that Greek letter there so for example uh, if the effect were one percent and the cause were two percent then that's one over two or as a decimal point five anyway so you can use this for um, for all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be for economics. So, for example, we could be saying if I added 10% uh, more fertilizer to um, my field, how much did my um, crop yields go up by in percentage terms? So, for example, if the effect is greater than the cause, this is in absolutes, so we're ignoring negative signs. Um, then we say that the effect is elastic with respect to the cause, or it's res relatively responsive with respect to the cause. So for example, if I add 10% more fertilizer to the field, and that causes the, or that has the effect of increasing um, crop yields by 20%, then the 20% increase is greater than the 10% increase in fertilizer, we would say that the that effect is elastic. On the other hand, if the effect is smaller than the cause, remember this is all in percentage change terms, then we say that the effect is inelastic with respect to the cause, or it's relatively unresponsive with respect to the cause. So for example, if I increase the fertilizer to the field by 10% and that causes crop yields to go up by 1%, then that effect is smaller than the cause, measured in percentage terms, and so we would say that the effect is relatively unresponsive or inelastic in that case. And we could also say there, we could coincidentally have a scenario where the effect is equal to the cause, measured in percentage terms. In this case we, case, we would say the effect is unit elastic. All right. So here's the first question. The price of wheat rises by 10% and the quantity supplied rises by 5%. What is the value of the price elasticity of supply coefficient? All right, so what's the cause? First thing you ask is what's the cause and what's the effect here? Well, the cause, the causal variable is the price and the effect variable is the quantity supplied. So let's write that in. Then all we have to do, this is a simple question, all we have to do is plug in the numbers then. So we've got a 5% uh, increase in the quantity supplied, that's the numerator, and the 10% increase in the price, that's the denominator. So increase here will put plus 5% and plus 10%, those uh, signs are just indicating that they're both going up. So a positive over a positive gives us a positive result. And so we've got 0.5 is our price elasticity of supply coefficient. How can we interpret that? Well, we know what that, before we even see that, we already know that the effect is smaller than the cause measured in percentage terms. The 5% effect is clearly smaller than the 10% cause. So then we know that this is relatively inelastic supplies the quantity supplied is relatively inelastic anyway we can then go on to 
um, get our coefficient of 0.5. We can put that coefficient into um, into a sentence uh, in this way. It means for a 1% change in the price of wheat, there is a 0.5% change in the quantity supplied of wheat. And it's a positive number, so we know it's a positive relationship. Positive relationship here means that the variables move in the same direction. When the causal variable goes up, the effect variable goes up. The causal variable went down, the effect variable would go down as well. The positive relationship just means the two variables move in the same direction. Okay, the next question is the quantity of beef demanded increases by 8% when the price of chicken goes up by 11%. What is the cross price elasticity of demand between beef and chicken? So here we're talking about, um, we'd, first we identify the cause and we identify the effect. So the cause is going to be the price of chicken and the effect is going to be on the quantity of beef demanded. So we can write that in. Change in the quantity of beef, the little subscript B just means beef. Change in the quantity of beef as a percentage over the cause, the change in the price of chicken measured as a percentage. And uh, again, it's simple, you just plug in the numbers. So there's an 8% increase in the quantity of beef demanded and an 11% increase in the price of chicken. So we get our coefficient of 0.72. Is this, by the way, is this price elastic or price inelastic. Well the effect is smaller than the cause so we'd say it's relatively inelastic but it's a positive relationship. By the way when we see that there's that positive relationship i.e. the price is going up so the quantity demanded of the other good the related good is going up as well that's a positive relationship they move in the same direction that tells us something about the relationship between these two products. It tells us that these two products are substitutes. When the price of one good goes up, the quantity demanded of that good falls, and consumers switch over to a substitute product, an alternative product. So the price of chicken went up, so chicken buyers decrease their the quantity demanded of chicken and they switch over to an alternative meat which in this case is beef. So we've got our coefficient of 0.72. What does that mean as a sentence? Well as before it means this. For a 1% change in the price of chicken there is what percent change in the quantity demanded of beef do you think? Well we worked out the answer so we'd say 0.72 percent change in the quantity demanded of beef and it's a positive coefficient so we know it's a positive relationship between the price of chicken and the quantity demanded of beef indicating that they are substitute products. Next question the price of bananas rises from $8 a kilo to $12 a kilo. In response, this is the effect, the quantity demanded falls by 10%. The quantity demanded of bananas, presumably, falls by 10%. What is the approximate price elasticity of demand of bananas? So, again, identify the cause and the effect. Well, it's the quantity demanded of bananas is the effect and the cause is the change in the price of bananas. So we plug those in. Now uh, now we've got a little bit of a problem. 
we know the percentage change in the effect, in the quantity demanded. It falls by 10%. So we're indicating the fall by a negative sign, a decrease by 10%. And that's over the cause, measured as a percentage. But we don't have that data. I mean, we don't have that percentage. That hasn't been worked out for us. So we need to work out the percentage change in the price. All right. So how are we going to do that? Well, if you um, look up the appendix and chapter one of your textbook, it probably has something about um, calculating percentage changes. And it would probably say something like this. You can measure the percentage change by the new price minus the original price over the original price times 100. So the times 100 is what makes it a percentage. Anyway, so, uh, well, that's all, that's all well and good. Um, but this is um, problematic because if we said that if we go back to the to here if we start at eight dollars and go to twelve dollars then our new price is twelve dollars and the original price is eight fine and uh, we can calculate our percentage change that way but what if we did it the other way around what if we went from twelve dollars down to eight dollars is that going to give us the same result? Is that going to give us the same percentage change? Well, basically the answer is no. It's not going to give us the same percentage change. So uh, this, uh, this formula is not the best that we could use because it depends on what you're going to take as your starting point. So it's not the, uh, the best formula to use. An alternative which solves that problem so it doesn't matter um, where your original starting price is whether it's eight dollars or twelve dollars is to use this formula so we say the change in the price p2 minus p1 or p1 minus p2 it doesn't really matter the change in the price divided by the midpoint price that is the price in between the in between p1 and p2 so then the question might be well how do you figure out what the midpoint price is well sometimes it would be relatively easy if the if the um, if the price were uh, let's say the prices were two dollars and four dollars then it's obvious what the midpoint price is the midpoint price between two and four is three that's the middle so what about in this case how do we calculate this midpoint because it won't necessarily be that simple um, the prices might be you know one million three hundred and thirty two and uh, the other price might be 5,829. What's the midpoint between them? Well, you can't just see that in your mind necessarily. Um, so, what you can do it is you basically take the average price, the average of the two prices, and that gives you the midpoint price. So, how do you calculate the average price? Well, where you calculate these averages, you add up the two prices, divide them by two, and that will give you the average price. Or in other words, will give you the midpoint between P2 and P1. So let's do that. So price two was $12 and price one was $8. And we divide that by the midpoint between 12 and 8. We can find the midpoint between 12 and 8 by adding 12 and 8 and dividing that by 2. So that midpoint between 12 and 8 was 10. So we've got 
the change in the price is 4 over the midpoint price which is 10 times 100 voila 40 percent so the percentage change in price is 40 percent fine now remember that that's a positive number that's a positive percentage change why because it's an increase in price so it's positive all right so now we just plug that into our original elasticity uh, ratio the effect in percentage terms over the cause in percentage terms the effect was a 10 percent decrease in the quantity demanded and the cause of that was a we worked out a 40 percent increase in the price so we can see uh, whether this is price elastic or not is it price elastic or price inelastic we can see that the effect in absolute terms is smaller than the cause 10% is smaller than 40% so we know it's price inelastic anyway so we can reduce that to negative 0.25 and then we can give a verbal interpretation of that it means like the others for a 1% change in the price of bananas there is a guess what a 0.25% change in the quantity demanded of bananas and we can see here there's a negative sign indicating there's a negative relationship between these two variables indicating a negative relationship means that the two variables move in opposite directions when the price goes up the quantity demanded goes down when the price goes down the quantity demanded goes up this is a negative relationship Anyway, so that's pretty much that. If you've got any questions, please send me an email and I will be sure to answer it in some form or other. Have a wonderful time over Christmas.